Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another 3D printing video. Look at this box. This thing is massive. Yeah, it's bigger than the table. Let's open it up, take a closer look. All right, everybody, so I had to actually get this thing off the table because, yeah, it's big. And uh, this is actually the uh, QD Tech X Plus 3. Uh, this thing weighs 31 kilograms, and it is, it's heavy. Team lift. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'd like to say a uh, big shout out to the folks over at QD Tech, they actually reached out to me and asked me if I would take a look at their printer. And I'm like, yeah, I love 3D printing. Uh, so, yeah, let me let me get it out of the box. And we'll get it set up from the table. And we'll take a closer look at the printer. Wow. <laughs> this thing was a beast. Um, it is packed crazy good. There is so much packing in this. I mean, it's it's legit cool. Um, I'm still in the process of looking at things. Um, so this is fully enclosed, right? Uh, let's let's look at some of the stuff it comes with. So, which I like. I like this. Hang on. Let me get it out. It actually comes with a dryer box uh, for your filament, which this is cool. This is nice. Dryer boxes are, they're, they're, they're a wonderful thing to have. Um, yeah, so I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, checking this thing out. I've never used a dryer box, but I've considered making some. But let's take this out. Got some extra parts here. Bowden tube, looks like some spacers. Silica, interesting. I've never seen a, a big pack of silica. That's that's pretty cool. We'll put this back in here. I think that's what this is as well. Feels like little beads. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put all this stuff back. Uh, we got our actual feed tube here. Um, yeah, this is nice. This is real nice. Uh, it did come with. Um, flash drive and got our instructions here got a special plate for bed leveling we'll get to that in a second open up the uh, accessory box Ooh, we got some PLA Re PLA Rapidio Rapidio very nice um, so Boom, got some PLA, which we'll definitely be using that for testing. Looks like it's uh, black. I'm okay with that. Uh, power cord. Looks like we got some rubber feet, which that is awesome. Uh, we got a network cable. Check out the spatula. Oh, that's cute. Actually, That's actually nice. I like the fact that it's not a big, long one. Because uh, they have a tendency to, to bow and bend, but yeah. Uh, looks like we got a filament uh, holder. Actually have a legit screwdriver, which is cool. Uh, all right, so this does come with, I think, two hot ends. Uh, I've got some specifications I'll read to you here in a minute. Uh, there's one hot end that's for more abrasive materials, which uh, I think that's this. Uh, we got Allen wrenches, screws, actually have a legit nut in there. We got a nozzle cleaner. There's a fuse. Evidently, this thing has a fuse to it. Uh, very cool. Another uh, Allen wrench. And... We got some a glue stick. First time, first time seeing that. Um, I use glue sticks on my printer beds. Um, it it has its place in life. So uh, yeah, I use them, I'm, or I use it. I'm not afraid to. Uh, let's talk a little bit about 
some of the specs on this thing. Um, so like I said before, this is a fully enclosed uh, printer. There's actually a top on it and a top for it as well. Um, this thing is so big. Scoot some of this over. Um, so this is basically uh, 600 millimeters a second. Uh, it's a 280 by 280 uh, build volume, which is awesome. Um, I do like the fact we got the, uh, do have a door. Um, this is actually, it uses Kipper 64 bit uh, processor. Uh, has an all metal frame, which is really, really cool. Uh, the cross beams and everything like that. Uh, very re resistant to deformation. Uh, let's see here. Definitely has a, a, a core XY structure, which reduces motion inertia and improves motion speed. Very nice. Um, got a high grade steel uh, for the linear optical axis. Um, 60% lower air deflection. That's that's a pretty big uh, percentage number there. Uh, it's got a new cooling system, uh, which uh, helps reduce clogs and has a smoother uh, extrusion process. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, hot ends. So there's a copper hot end, and then there's the steel hot end, uh, which is right here. The... Um, the copper is just for better uh, thermal connectivity, smooth printing, and you know more dur durable. The hardened steel is for the uh, abrasive material and for long-term uses. So I don't have any abrasive materials, but uh, hey, you know, both nozzles have a, a max temp of 350 degrees, which is nice. Uh, one of the things I really like about the Cutie is uh, it actually has a temper, temperature control chamber. Like this is heated. Like if, it, if I remember correctly, if it falls below 50 degrees ambient temperature, the inside actually heats up so you can print in cooler environments, which that's pretty cool. Uh, my printers are down here in my basement. So yes, that's definitely something really, really cool. Um, I think the max temp on it's like 65 degrees, which hey, that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's a that's a winter winter chicken dinner right there. Uh, it has a, a a circulation fan in the chamber. Um, another benefit to the heated chamber is um, layer separation issues. So if you have a, a consistently heated chamber. You should have fewer issues with layer separation, which, hey, I've, I've got to print. I've had to restart because of some layer separation. So we, if you're into printing for any length of time, you will have something with a layer separation. So hopefully this will help uh, with that. Uh, automatic uh, leveling, uh, high speed in real life, uh, again, uh, uses the uh, Kipper active meshing and purging. Um, it comes with a flexible uh, HF plate, which is right in there. Um, let's see here, yeah. And as of right now, it looks like you have to use the Cutie Slicer software. I, I need to research that a little bit more to see if there's a, this model is with the uh, other uh, software manufacturers. So that is pretty much the, the technical, the techno stuff. Um, one of the things that uh, I, I do know about this printer, I did a little bit of research on this, not a lot, because I'll be honest with you, I like going into these reviews not really with anybody else's opinion. So when I do a review on something, I don't go out and watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos. I don't have this stuff memorized. I print things out. I'm, this is real world. I'm unboxing it. I'm looking at it for the first time. Um, I do like this card. I like this. It's not a piece of paper, but I do like this. Interface, icon, reduce the distance. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, that's, that's, that's a nice touch. That's a real nice touch. Uh, one of the things that I do know about this printer is, um, 
when you fire it up, it will actually instruct you on taking these the uh, zip ties and all the stuff apart. In other words, it's it's packaged so well. There's heavy duty zip ties on this thing. Uh, the hot end's covered, but if I'm not mistaken, the printer itself will walk you through where everything's at to uh, disconnect it and get it ready. So that's that's really nice. Uh, we definitely got to check to make sure of the voltage. Uh, let's look here. Yeah, so right there, that's literally what's the first thing you see. Uh, but it actually tells you to remove the four uh, zip ties. There's some Allen wrenches, you, there's some screws you got to take out. We'll get to that. Uh, there's a calibration phase. Oh, this is cool too. It actually has uh, some filament um, specifications for uh, ABS, PETG, PLA, TPU. Very, very, very nice. I like that. I think that's one of the first manuals I've seen that actually had a breakdown of what type of nozzle to use, um, the sizes, does it need a dry box, print with the enclosure, print speeds, chamber temperature. This is, this is cool. I, I really do like this. But there's not there's not a tremendous amount. Um, it basically goes through and uh, walks you through everything. There's the covers. Okay, there's how to install the uh, the filament box or the dry box. Uh, the one thing I can say right off the top of my head, right off the top of my head for this particular printer. Um, where you put this, because the dry box is on the rear, that could influence changing filament. So, you know, being able to get behind it. But anyway, let me clear some of this stuff off. I'm going to check the power and go ahead and put the feed on. We'll come back, fire it up, and we'll start removing some of the zip ties. All right, so I've done a little bit more reading on the instructions. Uh, the rubber feet actually are really cool. They just fit over the hard feet that's already installed. I did check the voltage, which is underneath the printer. Um, so basically now it's according to the instructions. You basically turn it on. So I am going to spin it around a little bit so I can see the LED screen. Let's see what happens. It's booting up the boot up sequence. Um, yeah, this is this is interesting. This is uh, this is my first enclosed printer as well. So uh, yeah, uh, before printer PLA. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Please open the upper cover and front door of the printer before printing. PLA slash TPU. Ooh, there's a light. It's got a light. <laughs> you know what? Hang on. Yeah, hang on. Look at there. <laughs> we got a light. <laughs> we got a light. It's the little things. All right, so first things first, uh, English is selected automatically. Take out the top cover box. That's just so cool. You know what? Hang on a minute. You guys have got to see this. So, yeah, we're going to do this totally different. So, I'll be right back. All right. Okay. So, here we have it. So, I've got the uh, the X plus 3. I've already checked the voltage. Uh, it's set right. The rubber feet I put on. And I just fired it up. And the first thing's first, uh, when you boot it up, it, you pick your English. This is step number two. It's telling you to take out the top cover. We've already done that. So, remove the zip ties that fix that fix the print head. Okay, okay. This may be a uh, little uh, interesting here. I'm not sure how far the door opens. So, there's one. There's two. Okay. Let's see how this is done here. Um, I'm 
may need to, excuse me, I may need to go around to the other side. Again, this thing, this thing is, it's, it's beefy. Let's see how that's going. There we go. Okay. I may have it. I may have it. The, uh, the door's the interesting part. I'm not used to having uh, one with a door. Oh, that's a neat, that's a neat little setup right there. Yeah, this thing is definitely well protected. Very well protected. Oh, there we go. And I also like the fact that it actually has uh, cable tracks. Cable tracks are cool. Really helps to keep everything uh, in line. So the cable tracks. Uh, remove the zip ties. Okay, it looks like we've got another one right there. Find out what I do with my little snippies. Yep, right here. All right, so we got those. All right, we got two on each side down here at the bottom. Let's see. Again, I'm going to swing around to the other side. Cause these are these are actually big old beefy zip ties. Okay, got that one, got that one. All right. Let's see how these are together here yeah like I said these are these are massive zip ties these are big daddies they ain't playing they're gonna hold stuff secure okay got that one and then there's actually a zip tie holding the zip ties I'm gonna slide this around just a hair so I can get in here a little bit better. And let's see. Man, I'm telling you, those those bad boys, they are definitely in there. Remove the four, okay, yeah, there's four screws. I see those. Okay. But it takes this Allen wrench right here. Let me slide that there. Make sure you guys can still sort of see what's going on. There we go. Yeah. All right. Let me look at the... Oh, and it's actually marked, too. That's actually really, really cool. that the one? Nope. I thought it was that one, but it's not. I wonder if uh, one of my key handles will work. Yeah, key handle to the rescue. Man, those are, those are some big screws right there. Good long ones. So this is another cool thing too, is how all of this stuff is not only zip tied, but bolted down. That's some, that's, that's some forward thinking right there. Very forward thinking. Uh, one more to go. Thing has a big old fan over here. All right. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It actually lifts up so you can get the zip ties out. That is awesome. 
That is crazy cool. Crazy cool. Okay. Take out the packing foam right there. We got some cardboard back here. Another piece of packing foam. Okay, that's all there. Okay. Clean up my mess a little bit. All right, we took out the packing foam. Next, calibration. Uh, Preheat the hotbed to blah, 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 before leveling. Ooh, we're going to do some leveling is what we're going to do. Uh, so, yeah, let me uh, flip it around. I want to get a better uh, angle on the leveling and let you guys see that as well. Okay, so I got the... Uh, the bed uh, heating up to uh, do the leveling. Ah, about to moving platform, please make sure the platform is clean and unlocked. Um, yep, click the next arrow. Please wait while the platform and nozzle and lit initialize. Oh, we got movement. We have movement. Where's my little, uh, guess I need to, uh, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I need the instructions. I need instructions. Okay. Wow. That is so cool. That is so cool. Uh, let's see, calibration. Uh, initializing, okay, here we go. All right, now this is cool. Uh, on the screen here, we actually have uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and one. Uh, it's already highlighted at 0 0.05, and you can adjust the height up and down. Uh, make sure the nozzle and the build plate are touching leveling paper until you feel friction. Wow, okay, okay. So we got the uh, leveling paper here. Let's see. All right, I got it under it and wow, that's that's pretty spot on. That pretty much spot on. So now it's gonna go through its calibration process for the compensation values. Um, so yeah, looks like it has, uh, I think 16 points of calibration. So uh, yeah, really, really cool. But uh, let's let it go through that process. I figured I'd redo the uh, camera angle for you so you can see this uh this process of the uh calibration or the compensation values is what this is okay let's see what's going on here uh let's see all right so we got there you go and there's the calibration. I'm just going through seeing what's next. So basically it's going to go through all these compensation values and uh, it should be complete here momentarily. So this is, this is cool. This is really, really cool. Again, I don't, this is by far the largest printer that I have. Um, and I think I'm going to have to keep it here on my main work table because I don't think, I mean, it would fit over on the other tables. Um, I don't know. I got to think about this. Um, cause I'd really like to see how the filament and actually everything works. And I may try to hook it up to a five kilogram roll, uh, since it feeds from the back, that may be a, a good option. So, yeah. This is so neat. It looks like there's actually 
uh, another type of it doesn't have like a, 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 a an up and down uh, like a, a BL touch or nothing like that. It's like a looks like an optical sensor, which is very cool. That has me very interested. All right, so we're just going to run through the process. Like I said, I want you guys to see the process. I want you to see um, how everything is, uh, just as I'm seeing it. Oh, I did find out what that other thing was. That's the filament support bar. Interesting. Interesting. Drive box. So it looks like that's going to be the next thing that we uh, we do is the dry box. Okay. This thing is super quiet. Super quiet. I like it. Okay, we should be getting close to done. Okay, there we go. Auto leveling complete. So hit the completed button. Input shaper running. Please wait. Input shaper. Okay. Let's see here. Calibrating. Yep, there's that. I honestly, I don't know what the input shaper is. This is pretty cool, though. Very, very cool. I feel it. It's, it's like it's... It's like it's spinning up here. This is, this is crazy. I know this is going to be a relatively long video, but again, I'm going through this process. I want you guys to go through it. Um, I want uh, QD Tech to be represented, you know, as best as I possibly can with uh, an actual real world uh, experience of an unboxing. I'm trying to figure it, that is. I'm gonna have to, I don't see anything in the instructions that, that talk about the input shaper. It just says it on the instruction. That's calibration three or four. Input shaper running. So, yeah. I tell you what. I'm going to let it run. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. So, we're done. The next step is talking about we're actually going to load filament. So, a couple of things. So, I was reading through the instructions, and this is what is the uh, filament support bar and support cover. According to the sticker on the back of the machine. Oh! Oh, okay. So basically, this is what actually is going to hold the dryer box. Nice. Okay. Another thing that I read is that the um, um, the dry silicate actually goes into the drying box. So... Close the lid. Now I'm trying to figure out which one. I'm, I'm opening this one. This one's freeze dried. I'm opening it. Oh, okay. There we go. So we put this down in here. Like so. Boom. Easy breezy lemon squeezy. Okay. Let's see. Let's get this on here. Let's see what we can get going on with this bad boy. 
Place the filament spool holder into the top of the groove. I'm doing it in the top of the groove. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm just such a gomer head. Such a gomer head. We take our... Okay, lower the filament spool. Okay, ref, refer to the picture and direction to stuff the hidden cover in. Okay, rotate 90 degrees. Alrighty, got the silica. Okay, okay, we're getting there. Cool. So basically, when you when you put it on, you're gonna rotate it to the back. It's it's really, really easy. Nothing crazy hard. Uh, install the tube into the dryer box. Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. Let's do this. We'll put, the, we'll put it all together. I mean, honestly, it's 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 actually a pretty simple um, uh, printer to get printed. I mean, other I mean, it's it's not hard at all. Forty degrees, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. There we go. All right, so ah, got you. All right, so we got our our Bowden tube, got our dryer box here. Let's see, get this bad boy. Interesting. This is an interesting connection here. Very interesting. Spread the filament. Okay. Oh, there we go. Boom. All right. Get the get this tube installed. How far in does it go? Feels like it actually. Yep, that's it. Got her nice and secured. And then we got another um, bone tube connector here. I will say this. Okay, it's not too shabby. All right. Get the clip back on. All right, that's nice and secure. Cool. Now we get the fun part. We get the thread. Install the tube on the ground box and direction indicated. Okay. I'm telling you, you guys are alone for the ride. You're alone for the whole ride. I need to do some. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I need to do some more research on high speed printers. Um, even if they are high speed, I don't I don't necessarily feel like I would run them at, at tremendously high speed. Um, just because. Printing speed, 200 to 400 millimeters. But I do think there is a certain kind of filament for high speed printing. All right. So, I'm going to... Put it in this way. I'm gonna pop this right here. I just want to. I like this black. I do like uh, this black filament. Oh, there they are. Snippers! Gotta get the snippers. So, this is interesting trying to. Feed this into a dry box. Not gonna lie, that's that's a little weird. I've never done it before. 
and I can already tell you, it's uh, it's interesting. <laughs> it is definitely interesting. All right. So what I'm going to do is, I'm cheating. I'm actually going to put it in before I actually, I'm going to get it threaded beforehand. So I can, there it is. So I can see what I'm doing. The first time you ever do anything is always the one that takes the longest. Just saying. Or it is for me anyway. So I took the Bowden tube off. I'm going to get it started like this. Yep, there we go. So much easier. There we go. Boom. Telling you, that's the uh, that's the way to do it right there. Um, this back on. Now I can feed this through the tube. I'm just going to feed it till I feel it stop. That's a long, that's a long run right there. I think we're there. Uh, Sir intruder, install the tube on the blah, blah, blah. Enter the print temperature the filaments. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Download from the novel. I'm gonna, yep, that's about as far as she's going to go. That on there, that on there. Okay. My little knob. All right. All right. Let me get it flipped around, and we'll get uh, we'll get everything heating up and rocking and rolling. All right. We got filament loaded. We've got a USB drive. There's the main menu. Uh, the USB goes in the back. Uh, back right corner and we are going to let's see here we got a little file file button right there model inside test folder first printing models from the test folders for the Rapidio filament that come with the printer okay so hmm what should we I mean the Benji I mean, might as well do a, might as well do the benchy. Yep, there's the benchy. So uh, let me readjust the camera so you guys can see it printing. All right, so it's heating up. This is gonna be printing at 220 degrees on the nozzle, 60 on the print bed. This is 100%, 100%, 100%. This is literally default settings. Um, it says it's going to print this Benchy in 17 minutes, which that's pretty cool. So Benchies don't don't yeah. Like I said, this is my first uh, high speed one here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to I'm going to let this run. I'm not going to time lapse it, and uh, yeah, I'll let you guys see what I mean. It's yeah, this is this is interesting. I'm not used to uh, seeing things move this quick. It's it's strangely not normal for me. <laughs> and you know everything you can't print like high speed. There's there's certain applications that yes you, you can use high speed, but you know everything. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Wow. That is stupid fast. Wow. Here's where I'm curious uh, with the high speed printing. When you 
you start talking about smaller pieces, uh, that may be an issue, but uh, we're already at nine percent done. I will tell you this for high speed printing, you need a sturdy table. Because I'm, this table that I'm using is uh, four feet by eight feet. It is very well built, and uh, yeah, it's it's moving the table. I can I can feel the table moving. So you definitely couldn't put this on any kind of flimsy surface at all. Any high speed printer. But I, like I said, I want you guys to to see this like I've seen it. Very first print on the QD X plus three. Wow, fourteen percent done already. And surprisingly, it's pretty quiet. I mean, it's it's actually really pretty quiet. Okay. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, i tell you what, uh, like I said, we got about 13 more minutes. So I'm not going to do 13 minutes on this video. When we get close to being done, I will, uh, I'll come back. And we're back. All right, we're at 85%, two minutes left. I'm impressed. Uh, this QDX Plus 3 is, is pretty cool. It is fascinating to watch things print at such a high speed. Um, so yeah, this is this is neat. And so far, based on uh, what I've seen, um, uh, layer lines and everything look look pretty good. Uh, we'll definitely take a closer look uh, here in a minute because it says there's one minute left. <laughs> but uh, bed adhesion, everything seems to, to I've been I've been watching it. Due diligent, I have been watching it the whole time. I have not seen any kind of uh, issue or anything like that. Uh, other than the fact that it literally is fast. Really fast. And I really like this filament, this matte black filament that uh, they sent with the printer. I like this. Wow. <laughs> Doing the smokestack now. And that's actually a pretty small piece, so uh, looks like that's uh, where she's going to finish up at 94%. So it seems to be doing well. 95%. This is cool. I'm in, like I said, like I said earlier, I'm uh, I'm really impressed. Uh, I know with most high speed printers, you know, build volume is one of the things that uh, a lot of companies are looking at. Uh, but like I said, this is 280 by 280 by 270, which is still a good size uh, bed. You will not print a full size helmet on this. Uh, armor pieces would definitely have to be put down. You know, you'd have to cut them and do them in pieces, but that's that's not an issue. You got to do that on other printers. So, boom, we're done. Oh, I love that little closing shot right there. Be right back. All right. Let's pull it off the... Nice. Look at there. That's... Very cool. I like the fact, too, the... Uh, I mean, that's got some really good bed adhesion. That's really nice. Right. 
17 minutes on the dot. Boom. All right, so first things first. This is good. I mean, for a default setting, I mean, this is probably one of the best benchies I've seen. Yeah. Very nice. So, um, yeah. <laughs> QDX plus three. Um, this is going to be a new experience. Uh, like I said, um, I'm, I'm for right now, I'm going to position it on my main table here. And, uh, because it, it, it does need some, some sturdy, um, and I think that goes with any uh, high-speed printer because, uh, you know, the movement. And, again, the movement wasn't bad. I mean, I felt it, you know, by putting my hand on the table. You could feel it, but it wasn't like, you know, uh, shaking. Um, but this is cool. Um, pros, cons, uh, and packaging 100% on point. Uh, instructions on point. The manual, very, very easy to understand. It wasn't over complicated. It didn't have too much information in it. It had just the right amount of information. Uh, the dry box, uh, the instructions on the on the uh, the screen here is great. You have stickers all over it. You like after sales service. You've got the uh, information there. It's right there on the door. Uh, extra nozzle for different kinds of uh, filament. Um, yeah, the next the next test, you know, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna go through this filament, then I'm gonna try some standard filament just to see. I've got some ABS and some uh, uh, other filament like that. I'm gonna try into it, uh, but uh, it's a good machine. It's a real good machine. <sighs> you know, it's a whole different kind of machine though. Machines like this compared to normal. Uh, PLA printers, this, this, you're talking daylight and dark here, daylight and dark. Um, so yeah, this one, uh, with it being fully enclosed, that's a whole nother, uh, difference. I'm not used to them. You just the open printers, uh, having the heated, uh, box is great for, you know, for warpage. And when the temperature gets a little cooler, that's great. Um, if I had to give it one con, right, one con. And I don't even really consider it a con is its footprint. It's big. <laughs> it's big. It's heavy. I don't really consider that a con. But if you have tight spaces, yes, it, it will be a challenge, uh, especially changing filament. Like if, if I put this on the wall behind me, I wouldn't be able to change the filament unless I took it off the wall because it's, it's behind. Now, there may be other ways around that. There is a the top opening. I, I don't know. I'm going to do some research on that. But, but, I like the fact that the filament goes into a dry box. That's huge. That is huge. Uh, no matter how you look at it, that is a great, great feature. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a great printer. And I'm perfectly happy with the results. Um, this, like I said, this is probably... One, one of the smoothest uh, benchies that that I've ever printed, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, there's no stringing, no stringing in the arches, the, even the portholes, no stringing. So, yeah, it's it's great. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and review video of the Cutie X Plus Three. I'll definitely put links in the description so you can actually go check it out yourself. Read all the techno babble and everything else. But, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like the lid. I like the top. It is a 100% fully enclosed printer if you put the top on it. I also like the fact that when I started printing, it actually told me on the screen, you may want to print with the door open or the top off because of heat. So it's intelligent. It talks to you. Um, as far as that go, like inside the, 
the box right now is reading 28 uh, Celsius. I'm about to go change that to to feet. The heated chamber it'll it'll heat up to 65. All that's right there. So um, the only other thing I'm not I'm, I'm not concerned about, but I need to check into is the slicing software. I have to get into that and see how that is. I'm sure as time goes on, the slicing companies will be adding more and more printers. This may already be in there. I don't know yet in the one that I normally use, but I'm definitely going to uh, use the uh, the software that comes with it. But guys, that's it for the video. I, I know it was long, but uh, like I said earlier, I don't like doing these. I, I want to do these videos, even if they're longer, it's me going through it. You know, it's not bunch of editing and pasting and you know editing and pasting but you know what i'm saying i mean i want you to see as much of it like i see it so that does translate to a longer video but let me know in the comments what you think uh, if this is your first time to my channel do me a favor consider hitting that subscribe button for me definitely click on the more in the description that way you'll see links to cutie tech uh and also to all my social media and finally please always remember Printing toys refreshes your soul. I'll see you next time.